Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Sniper Elite. Today I will be continuing my Sniper Elite 5 viewer wishlist video and I will be reading the remaining ideas on my Discord server. If you want to take part in another video like this sometime in the future then feel free to join the server, you can find the link in the description below. And as a side note, you guys absolutely smashed it with the last viewer wishlist video. So thanks, and if this video does well, I might do a part 3 where I read the YouTube comments. And as another side note, I wrote the script to this video before the Sniper Elite 5 trailer was released. This video was actually meant to come out on that day, but I was too busy scrambling to make a trailer reaction. So there will be some inaccuracies in this video, as with what we are getting, and there will be some suggestions, like, for instance, setting it in the Vietnam War was one of them. We know that's not going to happen. We know it's France 1944, but I've just left it in there because it's people's ideas and I don't think they should be filtered out because we know we're not getting it. And rather, it should be kept in in hope we get it for Sniper Elite 6. So, without further ado, let's get into this. Pugskin says that a Belgium or a D-Day DLC would be cool, and I agree. It would make sense that the next Sniper Elite game would take place in France, and Rebellion could make a pretty penny from selling a D-Day DLC. During the early 2000s, every World War II game and their grandmother made a D-Day mission and they got boring. But in the true fashion of platform games, music from the 80s or police shows, if you leave it long enough it stops being boring and starts being nostalgic, and that is where the beaches of Normandy are at now. So in short, yes, Rebellion should make a Belgium or D-Day DLC, and we know now that there will almost certainly be D-Day missions uh, in the next Sniper Elite, so I'll be looking forward to that. Winter would like to see greater customization for your character, saying that interchangeable headgear and outfit changing in mission at various camps would be quite a good feature. To be honest, I think we can pretty much guarantee that this will appear in Sniper Elite 5, as interchangeable headgear is already a thing in Zombie Army 4, where you can swap out various hats on your character, and as for outfit changing during missions, Strange Brigade has camps at certain points during each mission which act as key checkpoints, but also allow you to change your loadout and your character in the middle of the mission to suit whatever combat situation you need. These camps might be a bit harder to implement in Sniper Elite 5, as Strange Brigade had a very linear level design, and there's no way to miss these camps, whereas in Sniper Elite 5, if Rebellion have any sense, they'll have a non-linear level design similar to Sniper Elite 4. But nonetheless, I think these are good ideas, and both will, in my opinion, almost certainly be added to Sniper Elite 5. Cheese Guy says that a cool feature would be more accurate wounding relative to where you shoot an enemy, like if you shot them in their arms, they'd be less accurate, or they'd move slower if you shot their legs. This is definitely a good idea to add for enemies, and could add another layer of difficulty with heavy troops such as Jaegers and support Jaegers, requiring much more firepower to wound them due to their heavy body armour. Cheese Guy says that this could also happen to the player, which I think would be cool but it would have to be handled very well. Either it would take a lot of fire on one spot to cripple a limb, a bit like Fallout, or make it so limbs could only be crippled on authentic difficulties because... Well, it's authentic. Almog asks for the allied intel on soldiers to actually have an effect on how they perform in game. So a man who's got hearing problems won't hear you as easily and so on. I think this would be cool as it would add a genuine tactical reason to read the allied intel and it would also add an extra layer of depth to the game. Milneso asks for the return of split screen since it has been absent in all games apart from the original Sniper Elite. I think that split screen would be excellent as Sniper Elite co-op is brilliant fun and there's no reason not to have local co-op and competitive multiplayer. Whilst hopefully, thanks to the newfangled 9th generation consoles, there won't be much of a frame rate drop, but even if the frame rate does tank, I'd be fine with anything over 30 FPS for split screen. Additionally, being able to play the campaign with four players would be amazing, whether it's online or split screen, it doesn't really matter, four player campaign would be mental. 
Milaneso asks for HMGs, which we technically had with the MG42s in the previous Sniper Elite games, but a proper variety with some sort of like loadout or power weapon, such as HMGs, LMGs or pistol calibre carbines like the M1 carbine, Beretta M191830 and Luger P08 artillery. This would add a bit more variety to the game and it would help switch up the ageing weapon roster. Additionally, it was suggested by Micro that having the power weapon system from Zombie Army 4 would help, where you pick up a power weapon, and whilst you hold that power weapon, you can't attack in any other way, unlike in Sniper Elite, where it replaces your SMG with the power weapon, like, forever. For Sniper Elite 5, I want more gore. Thanks to the X-Ray kill cams, Sniper Elite is an inherently gory franchise, but it has never been too good at external wounding, with only a dark red stain on the shirt of your enemy to show any sort of wounding. This is the sort of thing that ye olde shooters had, and I think that if Sniper Elite 5 had oodles of blood, and perhaps the odd dismemberment here and there, it would benefit greatly. Additionally, Zombie Army 4 has the feature of your character getting splattered in the blood of your foes, and whilst I think that Sniper Elite 5 shouldn't take it to the level that Zombie Army does, performing a takedown or a point-blank kill should shower you in a decent amount of your enemy's blood. Milanesso asks for the ability to choose one of many infiltration points to start a mission. Maybe you could jump out of a plane or sneak in using a rowboat or something. This is a really good idea and I think it would be particularly good fun and would add a lot of replay value to the game. We already have multiple exfiltration points in most levels that have them, so having multiple infiltration points would be a smart move. Cephal asks for the simple addition of kill cams with pistols and secondaries. This would have to be fairly rare. Maybe they'd only trigger on the final enemy of the group or when you get a nice collateral or long range kill. Either way, we now have sniper, melee and shrapnel kill cams. We definitely need a pistol and secondary weapon kill cam as well. Cheers Guy asks for a lot of things here, so I'll go through them all. Different types of ammunition such as hollow point, FMJ or slug rounds for shotguns could be really cool. More special weapons, maybe an MG42 or an anti-tank rifle could also be cool, as Sniper Elite 4 special weapons were really cool but criminally underused. And also a mission behind enemy lines on a battlefield could really be quite cool. Sneaking around an enemy emplacement whilst it is pounded with friendly artillery fire could provide ample interesting opportunities, and if all else fails, plenty of sound masking. Nikolos wants a scope glint scaled with difficulty. Compared to the old games, Sniper Elite 4 scope glint is like a spotlight, which is great on Cadet, but a little dodgy on Authentic Plus. Scaling the scope glint so it's very subtle on high difficulties would be great. And as a side note, it would also be quite cool to, if scope glint was removed completely at night for Authentic difficulty. Milaneso asks for a combo system when in hand-to-hand -hand combat to pull off special melee attacks, which I think would be pretty cool. But if I'm honest, I'd personally rather just have some more creative melee animations like we talked about previously. Alex asks for a photo mode for Sniper Elite 5, which we absolutely need and will almost certainly get. Both Strange Brigade and Zombie Army have photo modes, so we can all but guarantee that a photo mode will be in Sniper Elite 5. This is something I desperately want as it would make thumbnails so much easier. Alex also asks for realistic squad composition with a designated NCO and MG team. I think this would be excellent, although I think that this should only apply to some squads, as fighting identical squads throughout the entirety of the game might be a bit boring. I want to see enemies that go prone, like they did in Sniper Elite V2. This is a subtle enemy change, that which would go a long way to keeping the combat loop fresh. These sorts of subtle changes in enemy behaviours is what I really like to see in games, and it shows that the devs really care about the game. Silent Silver Race wants to see a slide mechanic implemented into the game, so you can slide into the action with Call of Duty Ghosts. I think a slide would work best if it was like the slide in Apex Legends, where you can slide down hills for extra speed, although I argued I'd rather see a dolphin dive than a slide if we're getting all advanced movement-y. 
Cheese Guy wants to see flamethrowers in the game. Flamethrowers and the associated flame troopers would be a great way to switch up the flow of the game. And the flamethrower could also be another power weapon to pick up, like the current Panzerfausts and FG42s. And I think it goes without saying that shooting the tanks on the back of a flame trooper should make an almighty explosion. Another cool feature would be to have tanks with flamethrowers on them to switch things up a little. My dad said that camouflage clothing should actually reduce your visibility to others, so wearing green camo in a forest would make you quite hard to see to the AI guards, whereas wearing arctic camo in a forest should make you very easy to see. This would be good, although there is the argument that the best character customization is the one that allows you to wear whatever you want and not worry about the stat changes. Maybe you could make it so that camouflage clothing only camouflages you on authentic, and on the other difficulties you can wear what you like. We also had a little discussion about other wars that Sniper Elite could be set in. I think that the two best wars would probably be either World War 1, because not enough games do World War 1 settings, and most rifles seen in Sniper Elite 4 were around in World War 1, so Rebellion wouldn't be too out of their depth. It would also be very interesting to see alternative secondaries in the game, as there were only really two submachine guns in World War 1, the MP18 and the Beretta M1918, and even then, these were both very late developments. Maybe they could let us use machine guns or something. Guns like the Show Show, Bennett, Mercy, Burton, LMR and Bar would all be very interesting choices. The other suggestion was Vietnam, which I think would be excellent, as Vietnam is both modern and classic, being one of the first wars after World War II. There would be tons of different options for sniper rifles as well, with a fair few World War II sniper rifles competing with modern designs at around this time. Stuff like the Car 98K rubbing shoulders with the PSG-1 would be awesome to see. Afghanistan and the Korean War were more options thrown around, and both have their own merits as well. The Soup Lord talked about soldiers performing mutiny. Maybe if you killed most of the squad on lower difficulties, low-ranking soldiers like the infantry could run away, somewhat like the grunts in Halo. Cheese Guy suggested a game with Carl as a spy in the Soviet Union during the Cold War. This would be excellent, as apart from the original GoldenEye, the world is notably devoid of bona fide spy games that make you feel like an actual secret agent. I would be more than happy to go in depth as to what makes a good spy game, and how Sniper Elite could easily be an excellent Cold War spy game, so if that's a video you want to see, then let me know in my comments or in my Discord server, which you should join if you haven't already. Greg M continues this topic, saying that it would be amazing if Sniper Elite 5 was a direct sequel to Sniper Elite V2. This would be quite good, as whilst there are plenty of games set during the Cold War, very few have tried doing very early Cold War, like late 40s into the 50s, and this is a shame, as both in the military world and the political world there are a lot of interesting new changes happening at this time. Danny DeVato said that he'd like to see a Sniper Elite game that showcases multiple sides to a conflict, like Cod World at War did, where you had the Americans fighting the Japanese and the Soviets fighting the Nazis. This would be quite cool to see, and we could even have like a Soviet Carl Fairburn or something as a meaningful and well-written character, and for the final mission, they could team up and do a joint operation and Soviet Fairburn would die because there's no way Rebellion stale writers would ever do something as radical as killing off Carl Fairburn, because that would be way too interesting. Maybe the Soviet sniper you play as could be Rosa Petrovna, because then that would be a returning character, which to my knowledge, Sniper Elite is yet to do. I said I'd mention all the requested weapons in the previous video, and I did, but since then Ronnie said that a well gun would be fairly interesting, which I agree with. Anything to switch up the aging weapon roster would be greatly appreciated, and since the Sniper Elite 5 trailer came out, uh, your wish is my command, because yeah, they're doing a well gun, so you're very lucky. Not seen the Browning A5 yet, which I really hope we have, because that would be awesome. Uh, but I can live in hope. Me and I, I believe that's his name, I'm not being stupid, asked for a more varied set of biomes for missions to appear in, which, to its credit, I think is something Sniper Elite 4 did very well on, 
unlike the consistently beige Sniper Elite 3, but there's always a good reason for more variety in set design, and something set in a proper city might be quite cool. As for more nighttime stuff, maybe you could choose what time of day to do a mission in, and that time of day in mission could progress in real time, so if you started your mission at 1800 hours in game, waited for an hour in real life, it'd be 1900 hours in game. Sniper Elite already has brilliant levels of player choice, and spicing things up with just a little with ideas like this, and like the one earlier about choosing your spawn points, would really be some meaningful innovation, which with the fact that Sniper Elite 5 will be on a next gen system, is kind of expected. I said that it would be really nice if Sniper Elite 5 had a well written story, as all previous games had just followed the formula of Carl stopping a Nazi super weapon. I'm going to do a brief spoiler alert for Sniper Elite V2, 3 and 4 as well as Halo 2. The rest of this video is just me talking about plot points and endings in these games, so if you're leaving now, thanks for watching and I'll see you later. For those of you who are still here, let us continue. I think that Sniper Elite V2 was the only game in the series that actually did the super weapon plot well, as the whole angle that it was in fact the Russians being the bad guys was incredibly good. The story in general was actually quite good, especially the bit where you're sent to kill Schweiger, only to find out that he's in fact been passing information to the Allies, and then you save him, and then after you've destroyed the V2 launch site in the penultimate mission, going to the Brandenburg Gate to tie up loose ends was fantastic. Sniper Elite V2 was held back by its forgettable characters however, none of whom led any lasting impression, which leads to its rather good story being quite forgettable. Sniper Elite 3's story was bad, as it was just the same as V2's, but without any of the imaginative plot twists like the Russians being the bad guys. Sniper Elite 4's story was slightly better, and it was helped by characters who were somewhat memorable, but it was still fairly bad, and in both of these games you didn't care whether either Sophia or especially Brower died, and you didn't really care about the antagonists either. It says a lot when Borm is the only antagonist in the series to physically appear multiple times, and this is an issue. I think that character development is actually more important than a good story. Halo 2 is often regarded as having a god tier story, which it does have, so I mean it in no disrespect when I say that Halo 2's story was basically Master Chief hunting down three dudes, whilst the Arbiter hunted down the Activation Index and was then Shock Horror, betrayed by Tartarus, which by the way you should have seen coming a mile off, and then the Prophets. This is not an overly complex story. Of course, that is far from all the details, but that is the gist of it. The reason this story was so good is that every single character was well written and believable, from the Arbiter in Johnson right down to Chip's Dubbo, everyone was well written, Mass Effect 2's entire story is just about recruiting people for a team and then going on one mission with them, but it's a great story because they have such likeable characters, and Jack. Sniper Elite, contrary to popular belief, has done a good story before, just as good if not better than Halo's or Mass Effect's, they've just yet to have well written characters to support it. Thank you everyone for watching the video. Remember to like, subscribe and comment, it costs you nothing and it's a great way to help out the channel. Stay safe and goodbye.